Hey guys, it's William here. So I'm going to show you a bit about Fuzik SQ200, which is the new sequencer program I'm working on. And it's a sequencer and plugin host. So you can uh, use your VST audio units and VST3 plugins. And it works as a, a full application and also as a plugin. So you can use it to host plugins and chain plugins on another host or just use it as your regular sequencer to make song because it can do pretty much everything on this program and uh, let me take you a quick look here at the program uh, you can also use it full screen then it shows the piano view here on, on the bottom what I'm going to use on a window, window screen because my machine is having a bit of problems uh, the full resolution is my computer so don't worry about that the first thing you're going to to have to set up with the first time you run the, the application not the plugin the application is the audio and MIDI settings by default is going to open up this page and ask you for the settings and you can use the Windows Audio direct sound but the best option is always ASIO which is already have set up and you can select the MIDI controller you want to use and this, this window can uh, screw down if you have a lot of options then just click save it and uh, that's it you can also test the audio here I'm using my speakers to the camera microphone it's not the best option but uh, I couldn't require the ASIO output with the settings I'm using right now, so it just it works. It's not the best audio, but uh, the importance of this video is to explain how to use the program. The next step is going to be the plugins manager or manager manager. <laughs> you just click on the Vusk logo again and select plugins manager, and you're going to click on option and you can scan VST plugins, VST3 plugins, and on the Mac OS 10 is going to show all the units plugin scan to, so there are different scans. On Windows, it's going to scan and test for 64 bits and 32 bits plugins if you're running the 64 bits version of the program or the plugin, because this option is going to work on both application and plugin format. Then it's going to show all the plugins here, tells you if it's 64 bits or 32 bits. You can right click to see to set a uh, custom name and uh, just left click to see a few of the options. You can also activate it or deactivate the plugin so it doesn't show on the list. I have deactivated a lot of plugins from my sonar installation because they don't run here, they only run on sonar. So, okay, so we have here the interface. All these words here, track, section, master, mood, so those are for the shift and uh, the number. Or if you're using the keyboard, uh, sorry, the mouse, it's going to be right click on the number. So if I want to go to the master area, just right click on three. If you're going to go back to track, right click on track. And uh, the same thing happens on these words here. And the top words are for the control. If you hold control and press space, which is the default for for the play, it's going to play only one time of this section. Of if I hold shift and play, it's going to loop this section. And what what are sections? You can have up to 99 sections here on the application. You can see here that I'm changing the section number. Each section can have different tracks and each track can have a different instrument or a midi track so sections is a better way to organize the song like introduction, bass and drums, introduction uh, uh, riff 1, riff 2, uh, drop and stuff like that so each section can have 99 tracks and each track on this current beta stage can be an instrument or a midi track and soon we're going to have the option of audio track and drums track so I'm going to add an instrument so I'm going to press 1 for instrument and it's going to ask me 
for instrument load because there are no instruments loaded yet. I'm going to load music station, so I press 3. And now I'm going to open the H tour. So I just press Shift E or I can right click on the number 16 here because it shows the H tour. You can see the E there, so Shift E helps me H tour. I'm going to select uh, G1 preset. I'm going to close the H tour. So I have now here the volume. The panning, so center, right or left. The instrument number, so I have just one instrument and this is going to be used for the current track I'm on. Here I have eight slots for effects, so for the plugging effects, VSTs or audio units. Uh, you want on, on a Mac, of course. So the next option is the program page. Since I already loaded a uh, preset on the music station and uh, it has loaded all the files on the directory, it's going to show to me here all the files that it has on this directory. If I press enter or return or OK or here on the options, I can use the left up and now to select the next instrument uh, preset, sorry. can see the limiter option, I can turn on off the limiter for this track. I have a low and high equalizer and I have a six band equalizer here. Then I can select the output if we're going to be to the main output for the buzzes. So I have eight buzz options and different outputs if my sound card have, has multiple outputs. Then I have four cents that I can use then I have the option to sidechain the compressor, but I have first I have to activate the compressor. So let's say I go to the mass area, activate the compressor there, then I can sidechain to the compressor. And I have my automation read and write options, and finally a compressor for this particular instrument. So I'm going to activate this compressor on this instrument. I'm going to leave the default values here. If I press ESC, it's going to go back directly to the track selection. I'm going to press record and record something very quickly here. see what's going on. I can just go to full screen and it shows there. So here are my, all my nodes. Um, let me show you something else here now. If I press Shift 8, it's going to open the H tour for all the nodes. But I'm going to quantize this a bit. So it's going to select M for the menu, process, quantize, I'm going to change to 1.8 and outlets, yes, completed. So if I open now, you can see it select 1.8, but I'm going to quantize even more, 7 quantize, quantize half. There we go. It's a bit ugly here, but eh, that's okay. So let's play. And 
as soon as it's finished this section, it's going to go to the next section. So let, let's go back to section one. I'm going to go to the master section now. Just right click on the master. Here I can select some effects I want to load. The limiter, the equalizers, the automation, and also the compressor, which are going to activate it. So what I'm going to do now is create a second track, just to show the side chain. Uh, let me load a new instrument, so I have to press new. If I press one, it's going to show me the instrument list. So I have no instrument or the music station which I already use it. But I almost want to use a new one, so I'm going to press M again, insert new, and I'm going to use, let's say, uh, I want just a click sound. I'm going to use the music station 9 again, and I'm going to just create a very short click on it. Oh, I, <laughs> I loaded the music 8008, that's a problem. I can use that as well. I'm just going to use an envelope here. White noise uh, This envelope is not going to work for what I want. Uh, I hate when I do that. Envelope ADSR, okay. Now it's correct. Freeze. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the sign chain to the master and I'm going to lower this volume because the, the vol volume is, is applied after the side chain sync. So if I press record now, let me rewind. I'm going to record just very quickly here. Not doing anything yet, so let's go to the master, to the compressor. I'm going to loop this, I just right click. sound is just making the compressor duck so that's a very classic side compressor uh, usage so usually you, you have a bass bass track and you, you send a kick to the bass compressor so it ducks when it, the kick enters it's a bit fast it's clicking a bit See how the CPU relations ring. Yeah, it's not bad. My computer is not very fast, so that's not so bad. Uh, if you have a multi core computer, it's going to show all the cores here. I have a four core computer, quad core. Uh, it's using mainly the first core, but each track is going to use a different core. Well, okay, so. Um, what else can I say about this program? Well, I have the mixer, the, the project settings here, the bit, bits per minute and everything else. You can export the project to a WAV file, have the metronome options. The mixer is just going to show the some view meters for each track, so it's going to show 16 tracks here. Actually, no, 
32 tracks, sorry. Um, then I have the mood and solo for each track. And I, there is also an Undo option for when you process the track for something. Uh, there is more for the program that, that I can show to you here, so that's why I created a very detailed manual which shows everything. So I really urge you to take a look at the manual. And uh, this video is very crude, I know. It's just a very quick attempt to show a, a bit of a few things. I'm going to try to do another video of more of a tutorial on how to do things. But uh, basically, basically it's just that. Uh, you, you have each section here, the track, the section, the master area, the settings for each track, which in this case is the instruments track. So it's going to show the instruments. So let me see, I'm going to load an effect here, I just press 1 Then I'm going to load the delay And set it to add It's very, very easy to use And just use return or ask to, to go to the previous page The ask is, goes directly to the track page which is the main page, if you really want to call that. Uh, the output is going crazy because the delay is producing noise, so it doesn't really rest. <laughs> but that's okay. Let me go back to the start of the track. Um, what else can I talk about? Well, the Tracks have several options of processing the tracks and things like that. And the sections, you can divide the song by section. So if I want to use section number one to a start point for my se next section, I can just duplicate that section. Just press up for the copy events. Press up so it's show yes. And number one is going to process. So now I have two sections, section one and two, which are the same. And the best thing is just rename section. So I press M for rename introduction. In section two, I'm going to rename again base intro. And now, if I go back to the, to the tracks, uh, just let me tell you about the section tracks first. You can see here the number of tracks that this section has, and the, the overall length of all the measures on the section. Um, if I go back to the track, I can also rename tracks. So track one is going to be pads, and track two is going to be side chain noise. Noise. Nose. <laughs> That's okay. I know it's noise. So, okay, I can also re rename instruments instead of Vuzki 2008. I can just go and rename to something like, uh, the, let's say, sidechain. And that's it. It's very simple. And the great thing about uh, the tracks is that they are all set to loop. So, let's say. I need to use a third track now, so I'm going to use a new instrument instead of one. I'm just going to press two so it loads a new instrument directly. And I'm going to use the ARP 2016, which is a 32-bit instrument. So it's using my bridge code to host it. Let me rewind first, and I'm going to record the bass. And you can notice that it's going to loop all the tracks when you press stop. Usually stops all the notes for the 
loopy tracks, but sometimes that can fail. Anyway, you can see that when I press play here, it's going to show here the number of times this has looped. So I'm going to go to the start. So that's loop one, and then go to the loop, second loop, and so on and so on. So that's just a quick video. Uh, sorry if the quality is not the best one, but uh, it just gives you an idea of how easy it is to create stuff with the with the Vuziki SQ200. So it's very straightforward, but it's best to you always read the manual because there are some shortcuts and and things and uh, also the the structure of how things are layout internally everything is on the manual it's very detailed and if you have any problem please do report this is still beta this is still being de developed so don't forget to tell me things and if you can appreciate right now it also helps me out because then I know a lot of people want this product to be successful so I can concentrate on this for a bit more um, so that's it thanks for watching